and welcome. Welcome back to those who have been following the series and welcome to those who've just dived in because maybe the title of this particular tutorial grabbed your interest. Um, we are going to cover, as it says on the screen there, Chef Automation. My name is Eamon Killian. I've been doing a short series of video tutorials on how to get started using IBM software. We're at this juncture going to take a slight segue again, a bit like I did with the GNS stuff in terms of DevOps and getting used to using other tools. At this juncture, I wanted to cover, you know, one of the key tools to helping you build out your cloud is to have some form of automation. And in this instance, we're going to cover chef automation. And in particular, I'm going to cover how you can set up in this video your own chef um, laboratory or lab um, on VirtualBox. The principles involved are identical to setting up chef within software. So after this we will cover actually setting it up on some servers within software but for today I'm going to cover chef automation, write a few recipes and how you go about installing and getting started using chef. If you've never used it Wow, you've got really, you know, some exciting stuff coming your way during this tutorial. Um, hopefully, I will make it as clear as I can in terms of how you can go about using Chef to automate the builds of servers. So, what are we going to cover? Well, firstly, I guess, what is Chef? If you're not familiar with Chef, um, you can certainly go to their website up here, chef.io. And on that website, it will explain to you that Chef turns infrastructure into code. And with it, you can automate how you build, deploy, and manage your infrastructure. Fabulous explanations, loads of stuff on there. Um, can't give it enough praise. It's a fabulous system in terms of what it does and the capabilities it can provide you as a DevOps. I guess for me, you know, even with their summation, what does it mean to me as a DevOps, as a sysad, you know, what do I use it for? Well, what it means is I can write programs that tell servers what changes to make to their standard configuration, what packages they should install, what softwares they should install, and I can get that server to be what I want it to be without having to sit there with loads of CDs and install loads of software or loads of wget commands and, and manually install and configure the server. And what that truly means is summed up in A, B and C there. What the first thing it really provides is you can automate all the server builds. You can start to configure an entire modularized view of your infrastructure and automate your server builds. You can version control those configurations. So once I'm happy that I've built a program and I've run it, I've tested it, I've made the server be what I want it to be or the virtual machine be what I want it to be, I can say, well, that's version one, done. I'm happy with that. And then I can version control that when I want to add something later to it. And of course, once I've done it the once, C kicks in where I can now say, do you know what, this bunch of servers over here, this, this 50, 100 servers, make them all be what that program describes. So instead of having to do that manual effort across 50, 100 servers, 100 virtual machines, it's a one-liner and it will happen automatically. So a little bit more on this, if that doesn't make it very, very clear. Um, this origin, this idea that, you know, make it easier to build lots and lots of servers is critical to cloud and giving you the power as a sysad, as a DevOps, to help your business achieve what they want to achieve. And Chef can really help you do that. It does so much more than just the basic stuff. Um, I've given some examples here in numbers one to five. Um, you can set up several versions of recipes. <laughs> Chef, uh, they have this culinary theme going on, which is quite cool. So the programs I referred to on the previous slide are actually called recipes. So you build a recipe, the recipe is your essentially a Ruby program that describes what the system should install, how it should be configured. And then you can have one of those for dev, one for test. You can have different environments, different roles, and it's really cool. 
you can revert to previous working versions. So number two here, you know, you can step back. You can try something out and then go, oh, that didn't quite work the way I wanted it to, and just step back a version. No problem at all. Really easy to do. We can build recipes to call other recipes, so we can plan our infrastructure in a modular fashion. Now, Chef doesn't take away the need for really knowing your Linux, really knowing your networking, and really knowing IT. But what it does give you is the ability to think of your infrastructure as if it was an object-oriented set of programming and actually start to think in a modular fashion about what depends on what, how you could configure those recipes to call each other and to depend upon each other to build up a catalog and make it much more easy to manage your entire infrastructure. So I've given some examples here of recipes that I've written A, B, E, F, J, K, P for prod, uh, Q, A. So everything you can see here gets A. Almost everything gets B and so on. And you can think about these would be just different recipes that do different things. Maybe A is for the Apache recipe. Um, J is for the Java one. Who, who knows? Whatever you need to do to make those servers be what you need them to be. Number four, periodically get all the servers to check. This is so cool. So once it's there, you can get your servers to check in every 30 minutes, every hour, every half a day, whatever you want. You can run a cron job or you can run a, um, a daemon that will basically ask the chef server, you know, this is what I think I should be and this is my current configuration and we'll go into how it does that. It uses a thing called OHI um, but we'll be getting into all of this over the course of these videos. And the chef server will say, well, that's not what you're supposed to be. Somebody must have gone in and manually added something or changed something. So I think you should go back to being what you're supposed to be, according to my list of what your configuration is. So that's really, really good for security. And then finally, number five here, wow. In a DR scenario, when you invoke and you need, you know, your entire business is looking at you, we've lost the data center, we need to build, you know, several hundred servers really, really quickly, and we need them to be production for a period of time. And indeed, think about when you go back to production as well, how you can continually manage those servers while you're at the DR site, manage them through Chef, and then when you go back to production, it makes it so much easier to go back as well into your primary production site. So, you know, that just gives you some idea and it does much more than this. So what are we gonna do? Well, first we're gonna open up VirtualBox and we're gonna go to my clone of CentOS 6.6, a vanilla implementation, and then we're gonna make three servers. Here they are here. We're gonna have a chef workstation, a chef server, and a chef node, and we're gonna build those up. We'll give them all host names, we'll do the hosts file, We'll uh, set up the network scripts so that they've got the right uh, interface definitions. And then we're going to reboot all of these and then ping test all of them so that we know they're all pinging each other really nicely. Once we've done that, we're going to build the chef server first. So we're going to double check its host name because that's really critical. Then we're going to set um, the SE Linux, the security uh, within Linux to permissive mode, just to get around some of the issues that may arise. Um, we're going to grab Chef uh, server. It's free from the Chef site. And then we're going to run the package install, configure the server, and get our GUI version up and running. We're going to then add a Chef user, create an organization, modify the IP table so that the firewall works for us, and then we're going to jump into the Chef workstation, number nine here. So we're going to dive on. Chef workstation is going to link up with the Chef server. It's going to download what they call the starter kit. Once we've got the starter kit on there, we can unzip it and get our Chef repo up. Now the way it works, just moving back a page, is that you write your recipes here, you push them to the server, and then the server pushes them out to many, many nodes. So that's why we're gonna get the Chef Workstation up and running, which is where we're gonna create some of our demo recipes. 
Once we've done that, finally, final step is to get a chef node up and running. The only thing we have to do here is modify SSHD config to allow root login remotely, but it only needs to be allowed once, and then we can put it back to normal. And in fact, our first recipe is going to be putting that back to normal. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're, we're going to set up this entire chef lab all in VirtualBox, all on this Mac that I'm using here today. And that means you can create recipes, test recipes, mess around with Chef, get used to it before implementing it within IBM software. Now, if you want to, you can follow this series of uh, videos on IBM software and you can create the workstation, the server and the node as virtual machines within software. Not a problem at all. That's what I've tried to show here with the bridge network element or I might use a NAT network, who, who knows, but bridge I've got here. Uh, that's the public interface and then a private network on the 1002. So I've got a private network and a public network that could be within software. So the commands you're going to see, the implementation, the installation procedures, you can follow this on software if you want and create three virtual machines and do your testing on software. It's not a problem at all. So that's it really. Um, let's dive in and let's uh, go and create these three servers and get ready for some chefing.